Good morning, sisters and brothers. On behalf of Monsignor Gunther, myself, and Brianna, and Pat Crema, who's here this morning, we'd like to welcome you and let you know how happy we are to be in your presence as we together celebrate this sacred liturgy of our Holy Mass. So in that spirit of community, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery of Jesus' love for us sinners, let us first acknowledge our sinfulness and our failures before God and one another. But more importantly, let us acknowledge a gracious and loving God who this very moment rejoices in offering us pardon and forgiveness for those sins. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God and Father, grant us, your people, so to celebrate the mystery of the Lord's passion that we may merit to receive your pardon through our union with Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, the one who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spend my strength. Yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Reclining at the table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and he testified. He said, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom Jesus could mean. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out which one Jesus meant. This disciple leaned back against Jesus' chest and he said to him, Master, who is it? In response, Jesus said, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. Jesus then said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. None of those reclining at table realized why Jesus said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast, give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel, and he left at once. It was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus said, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will crow, and you will deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was a kid in grammar school, in Nutley, we uh, started off our mornings uh, in prayer. And one of the prayers that we said every day uh, was a prayer, and I'm pretty sure Monsignor remembers this too, was the morning offering. And uh, it was a prayer that sort of set our sights on a goal, that whatever we had to do, however we were supposed to behave, uh, studying and paying attention and being respectful and all those kinds of things that is required of children in school and certainly at home, that we wanted to keep that, that, that commitment to that in front of our eyes. So the, the great prayer, through, we, we prayed to the Lord through the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It was a Jesuit prayer. And so that whole day, all the joys, all the sorrows, all the successes, all the failures, whatever it was that day, we were going to offer all of that to God, keep ourselves centered. And um, I always kind of looked at that, even to this day, a, a prayer that for me is sort of a renewal of our baptismal promises, that we are baptized into Christ and we're supposed to basically be just like him. That's what we're supposed to do. So I think that's what this is all about. And so I was reading the scriptures, and this year we had a, a course on Isaiah the prophet that we were not uh, permitted to finish because of the, the pandemic virus. But as I was reading over the notes that I had for the prophet Isaiah, 
for some reason, this particular section of his prophecy, I, I think it's the 50th chapter, um, kind of made me think of the, the spirituality of the morning offering. And uh, because Isaiah talks about this commitment that he is called to make to God as a prophet, he, he's, he's singled out. And, and, and baptism does that for every one of us. It singles us out. And so the, the ministry of the prophet Isaiah is something very special. And we heard that read this morning and proclaimed by Brianna, that, that, that the prophetic word of his. That's just not for himself, but it's for Christ and, and for all of us. We're called to witness to, to God. So in, in, his, in his prophetic words, uh, Isaiah reveals something. He says, God asked me to do something for him, to speak for him, to make his, his presence felt by my own person. And it cost Isaiah, as it cost any one of us. So this is what he said. He said, the Lord has opened my ears. The Lord has done this. He opened my ears. He opened my mind and he opened my heart. And he opened my will. My ability to choose, to say yes or no to God. And he said, and, and I know that, and I admit that. And, and, and I think as we look at the morning offering, that's what we're doing. We're saying to God, open my ears and my mind and my heart and my will so that I can do all the things and be all the things you want me to be today. And then he goes on and he says this. He says, the Lord has given me, as he's given each of us, a disciple's tongue. A disciple's tongue. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You and I are to speak God's revealing word, not only to ourselves, but also to others. And why do we do that? Because we have made a home in our hearts and our spirits and ourselves for that word. Anyone who, who takes my word in and nurtures it like Mary did, that person I will come and dwell with. That's what he says, John's Gospel. So, what is this all about? Why, why are we talking like this today? What, what's so important about this? Especially at a time when it's so difficult for us. Now that we're into, I think it's the fourth week, and they tell us the most difficult week, or the next two weeks. So this is what he says. We are enabled, you and I, even now, under all these circumstances, somehow, some way, to speak the words of God to those who at this moment in time are wearied. That's the word he uses. And we're doing that, aren't we? At St. Bartholomew's? We're doing it right now. We're all here together. I'm looking out at your selfies, the pictures here. You're present to, to us. And we're doing that. We're, we're, we're evangelizing. What we're doing here as we come together, even virtually, and I feel your presence. We all do. And we're going out to Verona, and we're going out to the shore area, and we're going out to California and North Carolina and Massachusetts and Maine, all the people that I know that are watching this morning. That's what we're doing. We're speaking a word of comfort to the weary because we believe that the Lord will provide us with what to say and with what to do, and that's exactly what we're doing. So to live the spirit of the morning offering means we will to hear. We will to listen to God who speaks to us every day. God never stops talking. We are aware of God because we are baptized disciples of the church. We are nourished and strengthened by the body and the blood, the soul and the divinity of Jesus himself, even if today, as we do today, receive the Lord spiritually into our hearts. And so we are called. We are transformed to be Christ 
to the little worlds in which we live, even though we're closed up and locked up. We are called to think God's thoughts, to proclaim his gospel, to be his hands, to be his eyes, his face, his heart. And that's because we have opened our ears and our eyes and our minds and our hearts and our wills to the voice of God that dwells deep within us. Let us pray. My sisters and brothers, as those called to gather at this holy table of the Lord, we, his people, together pray that the baptized, people like ourselves, may remain faithful to the bread of charity and the cup of redemption. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that those who are called to the Easter sacraments may hunger for the eternal nourishment that can sustain them on the way, we pray. That all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all in ministries of service and leadership within the church may remain faithful to Jesus Christ, who calls them, we pray. That the poor and the hungry may be nourished by the abundance revealed in the Eucharist, we pray. That those who are sick, especially with the coronavirus, may be sustained by the body and the blood of Christ, we pray to the Lord. That those who have died may now recline at table in the kingdom of God. And today we remember at this Mass, Mary Ann Bender, Catherine Blovelt, Donald Gosicki. And also I'd like to recommend to your prayers people, very dear friends of mine who, who died uh, yesterday, the day before. First, Matilda Tilly Fiorino of Westfield and a woman from Verona, uh, D. Ponterero, whose husband Pasquale is a cousin of Sister Elizabeth, the principal of our academy. And so we ask you and recommend those good people to your prayers. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us now pause to offer the Lord our own personal prayers within the silence of our hearts. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us in these sacred days and difficult days, O Lord. You are the God who sustains us, and you feed us with the bread that never fails and the cup that is never empty. May our share in this holy supper of the Lord Strengthen us to bear his cross and speak his redeeming word to the weary who are surrounding us this day. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Gracious God, 
Look favorably upon these offerings of your holy people and to those you make partakers of this sacred gift. We ask that you grant us all a share in its fullness through our union with Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, the one who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our union with Jesus Christ the Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are fast approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through Jesus, the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your divine presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as together we proclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious and loving God, you are holy. You are the source, you are the fonts of all holiness. Make holy these gifts of ours by sending your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion and death, Jesus took our bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He said the blessing. And then he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And so as we, your holy people, together celebrate this Eucharistic memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this bread of life, this chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember us, your people, your church, spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity and peace and union with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all your holy people. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in death in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your compassionate and loving mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your holy face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, the prophets, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we, your people, may merit to be co-heirs with them to your gift of eternal life, and so praise and glorify you through our union with Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. For it is through Christ and with him and in him, most loving and gracious God in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Amen. And let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not let us succumb to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace to us in our days, that by the help of your compassionate and loving mercy, we, your people, may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope, the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles and disciples, and say to us this morning, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather look upon the faith of your people, your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of the Lord's peace. May this mingling of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those like ourselves who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and I shall be healed. In the body of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, nourished by this your saving gift, we beseech your mercy that by the same sacrament of the body and the blood of the Lord with which you have fed us in this present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal with Jesus Christ the Lord, the one who lives forever and ever. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May your compassionate and loving mercy, O God, cleanse the people that you love from all seduction of the former ways of life and make us capable of a new holiness 
through our union with Jesus Christ, the Lord, the one who lives forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain with us forever. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and in the love of Christ. Again, thank you for your presence with us today and know that we love you and miss you and hope to see you soon. God bless you and have a good day. Thank you. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together the opening prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, take me along that holy way you once took to your death. Take my mind, my memory, above all, my reluctant heart, and let me see what you once did for love of me and for all the world. Amen. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The crowd, incited by their leaders, kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate spoke to them, wishing to release him. Why? What evil has this man done? I find no crime in him deserving of death. They persisted with their cries, Crucify him! Crucify him! And they prevailed. We are not mere onlookers. As sinners, we too shout with the crowd, Crucify him! May our voice instead be hushed in a humble prayer for forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me of my guilt and of sin cleanse me. Second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. The soldiers had their sport in taunting him. Hail to the king of the Jews. They mocked him with a purple cloak and the crown of thorns. Then when their fun waned, they laid the hard, dead wood on his shoulders. He accepted it willingly. Jesus, Jesus had, had said, said whoever, whoever does, does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Third station, Jesus falls the first time. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Tradition speaks of Jesus falling three times on his painful journey. Exhausted and overcome by the oppressive burden, he fell to the ground. St. Paul has spoken of the cross as being a stumbling block, as madness. But to those who are called, this broken Jesus is the Christ, the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. We are all burdened in mind and body, illness and weariness, the pace of our days, the pressures of our responsibilities, are the cross we have to carry. Jesus speaks to us, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother Mary. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Again, tradition tells us of a meeting of mother and son on his way to execution. She was so much the center of the beginning of this redemptive mystery. She was with him for much of his preaching and healing. She would stand beneath the cross at the end. Isn't it fitting that the one who is the model of faith and solidarity would also take part in his last journey? Be with us, Mary, on our earthly journey. Help us follow your example and remain close to your Son at all times. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The Fifth Station The Cross is Laid on Simon of Cyrene We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And they forced a certain passerby, Simon of Cyrene, coming in from the country, to carry his cross behind him. Jesus had not enough strength to support his cross. Why me? protested Simon. And we have said it too. It can be hard to bear the burden of discipleship. Sometimes it is thrust upon us. Lord, though we each have our own cross to carry, keep us ever mindful of those around us and our call to help bear one another's burdens.
The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Legend has it that while Christ was carrying his cross, a woman named Veronica, moved with pity, wiped the sweat and blood from his face with her veil. As a reward for her kindness, his image was left on the veil. We are not embarrassed at a legend that tells so well the gospel message. Legends can be lived. Mother Teresa of Calcutta wiped the sores of the hopeless and the dying because she saw the image of Christ in them. As long as you did it for one of these, the least of my brethren, you did it for me. Let me see you, O Lord, in those I meet today. In serving them, may I minister to you. May I recognize you in the unattractive and the irritable. Bear with my faults, O Lord, and look upon the good intentions of my heart. Increase my faith and bless my work, now and forever. Amen. seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. For our sake, God made him who knew no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. Laden with our sin, Jesus fell again. Lord, we who call ourselves by your name and sign ourselves with your saving cross continue to stumble and fall. Though we are weary and are likely to sin again, heal our human weaknesses with your saving word so we, like you, can get up again and complete our journey. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Luke writes, Large numbers of people followed him, and women too, who moaned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. For the days will surely come when people will say, 
Happy are those who are barren, the wombs that have never borne, the breasts that have never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, to the hills, cover us. For if men use the green wood like this, what will happen when it is dry? We have watered the way of the cross with our tears. For whom do we weep? For him or for ourselves? Jesus is the green wood, the living vine, scorched by his agony. Apart from him, we are only dead branches. It is only through him and with him and in him we have hope. The Ninth Station Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. By now, his strength totally failed him. Tradition tells us that Jesus, utterly exhausted, fell for the third time. Keep me, O Lord, from a total collapse of the spirit. Help me to know that my strength and courage is the Lord, and all who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will run and they will not grow weary, walk and not grow faint. The Tenth Station, Jesus is Stripped of His Garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. This was the place of the skull, Golgotha. What was left of the condemned prisoner? His honor was shattered in the courtyard by the soldiers' taunts. His strength was left behind in every step of the death march. Only his sense of modesty remained, and that, too, is torn away with his clothing. Lord, Lord as all was taken from Jesus in his last hours, may we also let go of the worldly things that keep us from you. 
May we be stripped of our pride in success, wealth, or material things, and be clothed only in your genuine love and compassion for all. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? The eleventh station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is nailed to the cross. The feet which carried the good news from town to town, the hands which so often were raised in praise and blessing, which so often reached down to raise up the lowly, are now fixed in an everlasting embrace of all people for all time. Did Jesus not say, Once I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself? Father, the hour has come for your Son to be lifted on the cross. As we gaze on his suffering face, may we come to understand the price paid for our souls. Through his suffering, may we find the strength to accept and bear the losses and sorrows that may come into our own lives. Twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus was crucified with two criminals. Pilate had a sign posted saying, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. The chief priests, the scribes and elders continued their mockery. Mary and the faithful women stood in silence. At last Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he expired. In deep sorrow we stand at the foot of the cross. Loving God, may our broken hearts be opened more deeply to your presence. Knowing that Christ's death has now freed us from the power of death, may we now serve as Christ's body in our world, Loving and serving all people. Oh, 
The Thirteenth Station Jesus' Body is Removed from the Cross We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And when the evening had come, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the Sanhedrin, arrived and boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate released the corpse to Joseph, who bought a shroud and took Jesus down from the cross. How violently was he nailed to the cross! How tenderly did his friends remove him! Tradition, ever conscious of Mary's presence, has passed on the sight of the mother receiving her martyred son. Michelangelo's masterpiece, the Pietà, has beautifully rendered this scene of indescribable pathos. Lord Jesus Christ, may our recollection of your broken body, cradled lovingly in the arms of your mother Mary, remind us that you were not only the Son of God, but also the Son of Mary, the boy whom she loved and raised, truly human and truly divine. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, Amen. Fourteenth Station, Jesus is buried in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took the body and wrapped it in linen cloths with spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified there was a garden, and in this garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, were there, sitting opposite the tomb. We, we have, have joined you, O Jesus, on the way of the cross. The hours of suffering are over. It is finished. From the hill of the skull, we move to the garden of burial. We wait for the Father's response to the loving and obedient gift of your life. On Easter morning, you will rise again, the pledge of the Father fulfilled. For if we have been united with you in the likeness of your death, O Lord, we shall be in the likeness of your resurrection. 